Okay, so this video is actually going to take us through the learning targets related to identifying numeric and algebraic expressions. So kind of being able to tell the difference between the two. It is also going to walk us through identifying the parts of numeric and algebraic expressions. So basically, if I give you some vocabulary, can you identify what I'm talking about within a numeric expression or an algebraic expression? So let's get into it, okay? Um, basically, the way that the learning targets are broken down, it's a progression, right? So your targets are the things that you're trying to learn, and we call it a progression because you're going from getting started to in progress to mastery. Um, this whole first section here has to do with numeric expressions. And basically, the same type of concepts apply to algebraic expressions. So that's why they're kind of broken into two parts. Can you identify numeric expressions? Can you identify algebraic expressions? What about the vocabulary for each of the different ones? Those types of things, okay? So let's get started. What are algebraic expressions. So when I say algebra, what comes into your mind? Usually kids start to think of, oh, algebra is like big kid math, right? It's what you do when you get older. Um, but technically, like the real terminology for it is when you start introducing letters into math, okay? So you're going to start seeing, I know the font is really weird on here, but X and Y um, are often used as variables in algebraic expressions. Basically, they're just letters that are used to represent unknown numbers. Um, so when we talk about algebraic expressions, algebra, right? It's just once we start having letters or variables, okay? Here are some common formats that you may not be used to quite yet, but we're gonna get familiar with them in this unit. Okay, so you're going to start seeing things that um, where you shove two things together. Okay, it could be that you have two numbers shoved together. It could also be that you have uh, two variables shoved together. But all it means is multiply. Okay, so we're used to using a multiplication sign. Now we just shove them together. And notice there's two different ways you could do it. You could put both numbers in parentheses or you could just put one in parentheses. Ask yourself, why do we put them in parentheses? What's the point? Well, if you take the parentheses away, what would you have? <laughs> You'd have the number 25, and that's not what we want. We want to represent 2 times 5. So you have to make sure there's at least one set of parentheses in there, so that way you're able to see with your eyes that it's two different numbers and not the actual number 25. Okay? Um, the other thing, we've already started practicing this, but this symbol here, um, when you're a little kid, all you think of is, ha, huh, that's a fraction. But as you're getting older, you're realizing that this line, the fraction line, the fraction bar, also represents division. Okay? And then here is just a nice little layout to let you know what's the difference between a numerical expression and an algebraic expression. Well... Uh, look at the root words, right? Numeric is like a number, and algebraic is the algebra that we were just talking about, right? So a numeric expression simply just means that it's an expression with all numbers, right? So think back at the very beginning of the year, we started doing order of operations, right? They're just math problems with regular numbers, right? Um, algebraic expressions is when we start having some um, variables introduced, right? So if you look down here, I have 6 plus 6. That's an expression because there's no equal sign, right? They're both numbers. Hmm. So this is an example of a numeric expression because they're both numbers, right? However, if I go a step further and I say 6 times x squared, well, the x is a variable. That is a letter that represents some unknown amount. So this is where we start saying we have an algebraic expression. Cool. Um, this one is going to be considered a, which one is this? An algebraic expression or a numeric? It's going to be algebra because we have a letter, which is called a variable, right? And this one here, 6 plus 6 minus 3, this one's considered a numeric expression because 
it's all numbers. All right. So again, this um, slide takes us through identifying the difference between the two. Correct. You're you're going to actually be asked to take phrases. Right. Phrases are just a way to verbally say something. Right. So you're going to take a phrase and rewrite it as a numeric or algebraic expression. And how can we do that? We need to know our vocabulary terms. So so, so let's go through and practice. If I say three times some number. Right. Some number is kind of like a way of writing a question mark in math. We don't know what it is. It's just some number. So when you have some number or even look at this, a number, something that you don't know, an unknown number, any of these phrases represent a time where you're going to plop in a variable. OK, so I'm going to take the number three times a variable. Right. And times just means multiply. So this is how you would rewrite it as an actual algebraic expression from the words or phrase form. OK, 10 plus a number. Well, plus is literally a plus sign. So that's not confusing. Right. And when we see a number, it means huh, something we don't know yet. So I'm going to plop in a variable. If they happen to choose B. You could put X. You could put, put Y. You could put you know, V, you can use any variable you would like. Okay. So don't think that B was chosen for something specific. Um, this one says one subtracted from six. This part gets kind of confusing for kids. So if you look, kids automatically want to write this as, huh, I see the number one, right? I see the number one doot, and it says subtracted from, huh? I see the word subtract. And then six is the second thing that I read. So I'm just going to put it in the order of what I read. One subtracted from six, right? But this is not what it means. The word from is a huge clue that the numbers represented need to be flipped in order. It means that I first have to know that I have six. Six. In order to subtract from six, that one. Okay, so the from is saying you need to know the second amount first. Okay, if I'm taking something from you, I need to know what you have first. So that from tells you, uh -uh, you don't just write it in the regular order that you see your words. You have to stop and think about it and flip the order. I need six so I can subtract from that. Okay. Um, four divided by some number. Again, some number is just the variable, right? And they happen to choose Y for the variable. We know divided by just means your division sign, right? Okay. Um, what about eight less than an unknown number? All right. This is another time where people will be like, oh, it's the number eight. Uh -huh. Less than sounds like a subtraction problem. Uh huh. An unknown number. Oh, I'll just put a variable, right? But this is eight less than this guy right here. So again, just like what we said, the word from is a huge clue. The word than is also a clue that you need to flip the order. Okay. If I have eight less than you, I need to know how much you have first. So that way I can subtract eight from it. So the word than is just like the word from. Those are both clues that you need to flip the order. Okay. So an unknown number, we're just going to say, right, that's your unknown number. I need eight less than that. Okay, so this is actually your correct order. It takes a little bit of time, but eventually when you see the word from and you see the word than, you know that you're going to flip your order. Okay. Ah, sorry. <laughs> um, here we go. Last one or last two. Two multiplied by 12. Oh, uh, we know what multiplication is, right? Seven more than twice a number. All right. So more than, remember what than is, than is one of those words that means you're going to flip the order, right? So seven is actually not going to be the first thing that I write. I'm going to write twice a number. How do I get two times a number? 
this is how I'm going to write it, right? A number is just represented by the variable C, okay? And if I want twice that amount, I'm going to multiply it by 2. So twice a number, okay? And I need 7 more than that, okay? So the 7 more is going to be you're adding 7 to the original 2C, okay? Right, let's try the next page. Doo, doo, doo. Um, parts of an expression. Woohoo! Okay, so we're going over terms, variables, coefficients, and constants. Okay, um, so you're going to get things like this. It looks kind of overwhelming at first, but I promise it's not. Okay, try to only focus your attention on this guy up here for right now. Alrighty, so here's my pen. I'm going to use um, a beautiful white just so it stands out. Okay, no, I won't. I'll use pink. Okay, here we go. So when we're talking about a term, when I say term, I always tell kids that it's just like saying parts. Okay, so how many parts does this expression have? Well, parts are going to be separated out between one another with either an addition sign or a subtraction sign. So what I mean by that is here's a four, right? That's a term. Whee! It's a part. Okay, it's a term. It's a part all by itself. Then I have a subtraction sign, and that helps me separate from the next term or part. Then I have a subtraction sign, and then that separates from the next term or part. And then an addition sign separates from the last term or part. So notice, all you really have to do is just skip over any addition and subtraction signs you see. And that separates out your parts or your terms. Okay? Same thing down here, right? 5 plus, I skip over that, z. Right? So here's a term. Here's a term. Right? Here's 4y minus 7. So 4y is a term or a part. Skip over the addition or subtraction sign. 7 is another part or term. Look down here, 5x plus z. 5x, skip over your addition or subtraction sign, z. Okay, so this is how you're going to identify all the parts, also known as terms. Okay, so that's what we mean by terms. Now we want to know what the heck a constant is, okay? So a constant, doo, 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 here's your example of constant, right? In the example up here, <clears throat> they're saying that 13 is a constant and 4 has also been labeled as a constant, okay? Down here, it says 5 is a constant. Hmm. 13 is a constant. Wow. 7 is a constant, 1 is a constant, 13 is a constant. So with all of these examples, what do you know about them? Constants are simply <laughs> a number that's all by itself. It's just a number that's by itself. There's no variable attached to it. It's just a number that stands by itself. And the way I remember the vocab term is constant. You constantly know that this is worth 5. There's no confusion there. You constantly know that this is worth 13. No confusion. <clears throat> Sorry. You constantly know that this is worth 4. There is no confusion, right? If I look at 5x, I'm like, what? I don't know exactly what this stands for because I don't know what x is, right? So this can't be a constant. I don't constantly know that, okay? So a constant is simply a number that is all by itself, right? A number by itself. Yes, yes. Okay. Numbers. We Okay. Um, going back, we're going to look at the next one. This is a coefficient example right here. Okay. And if you look up here, it is saying that 5x is an example of a coefficient and a variable. Okay. It is saying that down here, 4y is an example of a coefficient and a variable. Hmm. If you look over here, 5x is an example of a coefficient and a variable. So what the heck is a coefficient? It is the number used to multiply a variable. Basically, it is the number, number 
attached to your variables, okay? That's like the kid-friendly version, right? It's the number attached to your variable. What do I mean by attached, okay? Um, I mentioned it in another slide, right? Um, we are going to get used to it. When I say 4y, 4 is attached to the y, but in reality, this means 4 times y, okay? So your coefficient is literally just the number attached to the variable, okay? It's not the whole thing. That's a common mistake kids make at the very beginning. They'll be like, oh, this is a coefficient. No, it's not. The 5 is the coefficient because what is the variable? right? Your variable is the letter. That already has a vocab term, right? So when we ask for the coefficient, it's literally just the number, okay? So this is your coefficient. This is your variable. I remember coefficient because it's kind of like the variable's coworker, okay? Miss Hilker is my coworker. I work alongside her, right? So this is like a coworker for a variable or a coefficient, co. Okay. And then the last one is variable. Can you identify a variable? Your variables are just your letters, okay? Any letter you see, doo -doo -doo, whether it's standing alone or attached to something, right? The letter itself is your variable, and it represents some unknown number. Okay, so now if we go back and we think about this, right, if we go back and we have to talk about terms, terms is just another way of saying parts, right? Variables are the letters, right, that are attached, or sorry, letters that are representing um, an unknown, right? So this is, a term is like a part. A variable is like a letter, so Y or A or C, it doesn't matter what, right? A coefficient is what is attached to your variable. So that could be like your 3X. The 3 is your coworker, your coefficient, right? And your constants are just numbers by themselves. So you constantly know what they're worth because they're all by themselves. Okie dokie. All right, here we go. Moving on, here is just another fabulous example. Um, this is a good screenshot because it shows you, hey, the three and the five are your coefficients, your X and your Y are your variables, and the nine is a constant because it's a number all by itself, right? And then if I say how many terms or parts are there, right? If you're like, wait, I can't remember what a term is. Terms are separated by addition or subtraction signs right? So that's the whole reason why we can say, huh, this is a term. Oopsies. Will it not let me draw? There we go. Here's a term, addition sign. Here's a term, subtraction sign. Here's a term, right? So if I asked you to list them out, this is what you do. 3x comma 5y comma 9. Cool. If I say like terms, it simply means that they have the same variable. And we'll get further into that in just a second. Okay. Um, that is the end of this little lesson. So if you look, we just went through and we practiced, right? What are the different parts of your expression, right? Um, can you explain the difference between an expression and an equation, right? Um, we already had another video like that, but please keep in mind if I say what's the difference between an expression and an equation. If we look, these are all examples of expressions, right? Because they don't have equal signs. So your expression is going to have um, no equal sign attached to it, right? That's in a different video, but you should feel comfortable with that already right? Can you translate vocabulary into operations? So that is where we practice this, right? So if I say times, do you know that means multiplication? If I say plus, do you know that means addition? Um, there are other terms that you need to know that were not mentioned on this slide. So if I say the sum of three and a number, do you know what sum means? 
if I they say the sum of three and a number, I mean addition, right? If I say the product, do you know what that means, right? The product of three and a number. Sorry, I know it's, it takes me so long to write with this silly pad. Okay, so the product of three and a number would be this, right? Product is the same thing as multiplying, okay? If I say the quotient, do you know what that means? The quotient? Um, so if I said like five more than the quotient of two, oh, seven and two, whatever. That would mean um, seven is being divided by two. That's the quotient. We'd find the quotient if we did seven divided by two. And if I wanted five more than that, I could write it like this. Okay. So quotient just means to divide. Okay. So anyway, this right here did not give you all like the main vocab that you might not know yet. So if you want to take a screenshot right now, this could be a good way to do it. Ah! This could be a good way. So um, example. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Going back very quickly to our learning targets, right? That's translating vocab, right? Um, and translating a phrase into a numerical expression. Um, the next video that I'm going to do is identifying like terms, right? And then we'll get into um, distributive property. Okay, so that's coming up in another video.